that we're basing this on in general is this one. It's from Henry Cloud and John Townsend. And this is the workbook. Um, I'm going to be working loosely from this book. When I taught this class the last few times, I just basically went straight down question by question by question, page by page out of this workbook. I'm not really going to do that this time. I'm going to generally follow the workbook, but I'm going to loosen it up a little bit and incorporate more. I'm going to incorporate more information about why we have trouble setting boundaries and kind of unpacking that a little bit, talking about anxiety issues, fears, uh, shame, reasons, the, the, the backstories of why we have trouble setting boundaries. Um, so I want to allow space and time to do that. So in order to have space and time to do that, I'm not going to be going down question by question by question like I have in the past, but generally following this. This is a good workbook to get um, if you need. Now, some of the other books that I'm going to be talking about, um, and by the way, this is what the Boundaries book looked like a long time ago. This is the old school. Um, you probably won't find one that looks like this much anymore. I've had this a really, really long time. The new one is, looks like that uh, black, white, and red one, um, just FYI. But if you find one like this, it's the same thing. It's just old. Um, Brene Brown is a author of mine that I love. And she has a couple books that I will be covering in here. It's kind of hard to hold this and do these books at the same time. Okay, so here's a couple of books that I'm going to be reading from or pulling excerpts out of. Um, I thought it was just me, but it isn't. Excellent, excellent book on shame. Brene Brown is a fantastic speaker, TED Talk speaker, author. She's amazing. Um, and here's another of hers, The Gifts of Imperfection. Um, she talks about boundaries a lot in her books. Um, and there's another one by Henry Cloud and John Townsend, the authors of the Boundaries book, called Safe People. Um, this is an older book as well, but it's a really, really good one. Because this is something you're going to need to figure out when you're forming relationships. Is this person a safe person? And we'll talk about that in the, in the weeks to come. How do you determine, is this person that I'm in a relationship with, how do I figure that out? Because if they're not a safe person and you share personal information with them, what's coming your way is pain, okay, on several levels. So it's really important to try to figure out, it's like, well, how do I figure out? How do I know? If this person is safe or not safe, that's a really good question. And that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about. Because all this weaves through boundaries and healthy relationships as the weeks progress. Okay? Any questions so far? All right. Um, I think that's about all the intro that we needed to do. I'm going to open in prayer. Like I said, if you don't happen to be a Christian, that's cool. Just thumb through your text. All right? Dear Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity. I thank you for this church and these wonderful people that you have brought together. I, I thank you for the team. I pray, Father, that this class and what we talk about will bring you glory. That this class is not about me. This class is not about my team. This, is a, this class is healthy. I pray that your Holy Spirit will be the one that you would be here in this class with us, that you would help me to speak what I need to speak, keep me from saying something that I shouldn't be saying, which is hard, by the way. I pray, Father, that you would give us all eyes to see and ears to hear, that as we read this material and we, we learn it, we talk about it, that you would plant seeds down inside of us. Seeds that can grow, that can help us change and live lives that bring you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So, first thing I want to throw out there is that the only people that need to know anything about boundaries 
the only ones, are the people who are in relationships with other people. That's all. That's all. Okay? So, if you happen to live on a deserted island somewhere, and you just like boat it in just for this class, then you're wasting your time. <laughs> Go back to the island, lay in the sun for the rest of us, okay? The only people <laughs> that need boundaries are the people that are in relationships with other people, okay? If you're in a relationship with another person, you have already run into boundaries or lack thereof. Every one of us has. Now the thing about boundaries, and I'll, I'll try to keep this, I'll try to go, I'm, I'm really bad about just jumping around and get, because stuff will get me, okay, sorry. Um, I'm glad this is not live. Yeah. We're live streaming, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. Um, not tonight, but it, uh, check it on. Calm me down whenever I knew yeah. they could edit that. Yeah. Um, here. We have a, I forgot to say that, we have a Facebook page. Sarah is amazing. Her tech skills, yes, she's shaking her well, head Well, it's now. not working right now. <laughs> she, um, she has set us up a Facebook page. And how can we show them, because I don't have it pulled up. I guess I can pull it up on my computer later. Oh, yeah, we can just, yeah. But it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's let your no be no. Mm -hmm. Boundaries, small groups, right? Yeah, yep. That's what it's called. So if you go to Facebook and you, go, you search at the very top, mm -hmm. let your no, no be, be no. no. Boundaries, small groups, small group, yeah, singular. Then you should see us come up. It will have t like two tennis shoes with a, like a street, a yellow street. Yeah, like don't cross the line. Yeah, like don't, <laughs> like a line, like a yellow mark that you see in parking lot or something. That's our group. And we wanted to do this so that people who can't come here, maybe they're too far away. Maybe you have relatives or friends that once we get going and you're like, oh my gosh, I know somebody that could really benefit from this, or I'm in a relationship with someone, I run into this in my practice, where they're like, I really get this and I'm trying to do this, but you know, it'd be really helpful if the person I'm trying to set boundaries with has the same vocabulary. Like when we're talking about yards, which we will talk about here in a minute, um, if I say you're in my yard, they'll know what that means. Um, so if that's the case, and they can't come, they're working during this time or whatever, they can go to the Facebook page and watch the video there. Let your no be no small group. Oh, Let your no be no boundaries, boundaries. small group. Small group. Yeah. So this is the first time we're doing this, so I'm kind of like, wah, you know. Yeah. So we're not live tonight. Yeah. Practice round. Sure. <laughs> and even when we're live, she's going to edit it. Yes. That's good. You'll, you'll know why later. So. Uh, um, okay. So I want to, and by the way, no judging, okay? I had to teach myself PowerPoint like a few days ago. Oh. Don't judge. Sweet. Okay. But I don't know that yet. All right. Um, we'll be kind. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, I'm just saying, I thought rather, I thought it might be good to have. Okay, so these are some examples of common boundaries. Because I'm like a visual person. I said that earlier, I like to see stuff. Um, there's boundaries all around us that are very common. I mean, can you imagine driving on a road without lines? I can hardly drive on the road with lines. And for those people that know me, I have an issue with driving. I, I'm a a very, let's just say, type A kind of driver. Pretty intense. And I want to get where I'm going. And um, I'm not going to go on that soapbox right now. You'll probably hear about it later. But lines, doors. So here we have, this is my side. That is your side. Now in the white lines, in the passing lane, the regular lane, People that are driving slower need to get in the regular lane. They don't need to be in the fast lane, I'm just saying. Um, doors. Walls. The walls say, this is our, inside here is our class. 
out there is the hallway and the doors. This is, it's your house. This is my room. Out there is not my room. And my room is my stuff. Out there is not my stuff. Okay. Um, can anybody just think about uh, some typical boundaries? Anything come to mind? Anything divisions that help you honor different places? Fences. Fences. Yeah. Yes. Passwords. Ooh, that's a good one. What was that? Passwords. Passwords. This is my stuff, not your stuff. You can't get in. Not that I have an issue with people. <laughs> <laughs> this is what came to mind. I don't know any. That's a good one. I saw people do. Because <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the boundaries are all around us, okay? So here are some examples. Skin. Inside the skin is me. Outside the skin is not me, okay? People. And we'll get in, we get kind of deep on different issues. Um, people who have experienced um, sexual abuse have their very skin violated. Okay? It's a violation. Skin says, this is me. What's in here belongs to me. It doesn't belong to you. You are out there. This is me in here. Okay? Words. Especially the word no. That's a boundary. No, I'm not going to do that. You want me to do that. I don't want to do that. No. That's a type of a boundary. What we believe, what our truth is, that's a type of a boundary. Um, I mentioned earlier about some people that may not be Christian. And I talk with lots of different people. Think about religious beliefs. Think about um, political beliefs. If you're talking with someone who has effective boundaries, you can speak to someone who has different beliefs than you, and both people are respecting the other person's right to their belief, and you can have a really wonderful conversation. You can find out, gosh, why do you believe that? Help me understand why you believe that. Let me explain why I believe what I believe. Unfortunately, and this comes out a lot in, in um, political conversations, I love to have discussions with people to find out why they believe what they believe. But I also expect to be respected as well. It's very difficult, I've discovered, to have a conversation with someone about a political issue without somebody getting all their knickers in a twist. And they get angry. They get angry because this is what they believe. And shame on me that I don't believe that. Okay, all right. Why can't you believe what you believe? I believe what I believe, and we can respect each other for that because that's a boundary. We have that right. You have your right to believe what you believe. I have a right to believe what I believe. Okay, and you can have wonderful discussions if that's the case. If you don't have healthy boundaries, not so much. Time. Um, okay, I take notes on my regular PowerPoint. So I'm going to have to go back. Okay. All right. See, I've discovered these little notes you write down here, but you don't see them when it flashes up there. How do you see the notes while the regular thing is up there? I don't know. It's a boundary. I <laughs> <laughs> um, know how to do it on Google. <laughs> you can just go through it with your notes if you want to. Um, you can just leave it up with your notes. <laughs> well, I could, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Okay, so the time thing, I was going to say, t think about ghosting. Okay? When someone is texting you and they are blowing up your phone, Okay, they're all over you. And they're not reading your, your signals. You know, they're like texting, 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 and you're not texting back. But they just keep on and on and on. Okay? You can like not text back. That creates a distance of time. Some people call that ghosting. 
And you just like, you don't. Because you have a right to decide when you're going to communicate back and when you're not. If they want to send you 50 texts every day, you can't really stop them. But you can determine when you're going to text back. You can determine how much time you want to elapse before you text back. See, that's another type of boundary. Time. Geographical distance. Um, some of us have relationships with people that we have moved away from for a darn good reason. And we don't want to be anywhere geographically close to them. Sometimes those people are family members. Unfortunately, some of the, the most egregious boundary issues are in families. Sometimes the people that you think should support you the most and love you the most are the hardest to deal with at times. Not always, like I said, everybody's situation is different. Sometimes the best way that we can just set a boundary with someone is move away. Now moving away, I mean geographical distance, that could be like relocating to another state. It could be at a workplace and your desk was next to somebody and they wouldn't leave you alone. And you're like, you, you give them all the, you know, you say your thing, which we'll go that into that in future weeks and future lessons, and they won't listen. So you might want to just ask to move to another part of the, the building. You create distance away from them. Another type is emotional distance. Um, I've got reference say people. That is something that we'll talk about in here um, is that you decide that someone is not a safe person and you decide to keep your emotional vulnerabilities to yourself. You decide not to become emotionally vulnerable to someone who is not safe. Sometimes we can figure out they're not safe before we get hurt too bad, sometimes you can't. Okay? Um, but once you figure it out, and you will figure it out, sooner or later, you will figure it out. And when you do, at that point, you can create an emotional distance and you can be cordial, you can be nice, you can be kind, but your true, what I call your pearls, your real feelings and your real thoughts, the stuff that's down in here that's deep, the real stuff, the essence of you, you have to decide, is it safe to share that or not? So you can create an emotional distance with someone and respect them, you know, love them as God's creation, but you're not going to tell them personal things because they have shown you that they're not going to respect it. And they might use it to hurt you. Um, people, relationships, that's short for relationships, with healthy versus dysfunctional people, you can create boundaries like who you're hanging out with. You know, if you're, if you're with a bunch of healthy people, you can create a boundary with people. Like um, if there's someone that is in your life that is dysfunctional and is causing you problems, if you can ally yourself and create relationships, connections with people who are healthy and who are on your side, so to say, then you can kind of create a boundary that way where this other person maybe has to work through other people to get to you. If you're in a relationship with a bunch of dysfunctional people, you'll know it. Um, everywhere you turn, it feels unsafe. Um, so that, you quickly figure that out. Um, who the healthy ones are, who the dysfunctional ones are. The question is what you do next, and that's, that's what we'll be talking about. And then consequences. Um, a consequence might be if somebody, um, let's say, hypothetically, let's say that someone wanted to hang out with you. And you could tell they wanted to like take your relationship to the next level. And they said, hey, you know, meet me, or I'm gonna, you know, meet you, let's go see a movie. And so you said, meet there at eight. So you're there at eight. And the other person is not. They roll in about 8.30 with an excuse. You're like, well, okay, everybody, things happen, right? I mean, people, things happen to people, you know, 
It's all right, roll with it. Well then, the next weekend, hey, let's go to a movie. Meet you there at eight. You're there at eight, the other person rolls in, 8.30. Now, we start having a pattern developing. That's what you wanna look for is patterns because we can all have wonky weirdo days and we don't do what we want to do. But when you start seeing patterns, so if someone is consistently late, and considerably late, they're sending you a message. What message do you think they're sending you? Looked into it is, but it's usually that they don't care about you. Yes. That's how people are just really bad about time. I've noticed some people like that. Well, yes, you're right about that. But they've been allowed and enabled to put other things ahead of you if they're just really bad about time. Because I guarantee you, if there were enough consequences, they'd figure it out. So if you have someone who's, who's sending you a lesson, they're sending you a message. I, I don't really care about you. There's other things in my life that I'm putting above you because you can... <laughs> You can go down the list in your head like I used to do with my kids when they would like not do what I said. I said, okay, I told you to do this. You didn't do this. So let me see, you know, did you hear me? Is there anything wrong with your ears? No. Have you had a head injury? No. Do you have the intellect to understand what I'm saying? Yes. Do I have trouble communicating myself? No. Okay, so you can hear me, you don't have a head injury, you're smart enough to understand what I'm saying, and I can communicate myself very well, so you've chosen not to do this for some reason. And that's really not okay, because I'm your mom, and I told you to do this. So see, when people have a pattern, they're choosing something, in that example that I gave you, they're choosing something ahead of you, and they're doing it consistently. And like you said, they're sending you the message you're not as important to me as these other things. Again, if it's a pattern. So, back to consequences, if that's happening with you, and this is just one example, I could give a lot of different examples, but if that's happening with you, the next time this person says, hey, let's go see a movie. What, Larissa? No. What? Why not, man, let's go. Come on. You so you my... could just show up at 8.30. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're not. Or you can get revenge and show up at 9. <laughs> <laughs> really yeah. Now we're in a whole another study. Uh, that's what it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, I like, <laughs> I like the one about, well, you could just show up at 8.30. Let's talk about that for just a minute. Because on the one hand, you know, you're being flexible, right? Just kind of going with the flow. That person has trouble getting there at 8 o'clock, you know, whatever, be respectful of that. I, I can change, it's not that big a deal, go with the flow. Is there anything wrong with that? No. But the next time they'll show up at 9. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends what time the movie begins, too. Well, and that's true, because if it started, you'd miss half of it, you missed half an hour of it, you know? Because if, you, if the movie starts at 8, and they said they would meet you there at 8, and they consistently, remember the word pattern, they consistently show up 30, not five minutes, not 10 minutes, 30 minutes past when they said they were gonna be there. You're late for the movie, of course, really you've dismissed the previous, but anyway, so they're 30 minutes late, they've done this and done this. If you adjust to them, what message are you sending to them? That's control. I mean, like, like they have control. Mm -hmm. Like, they're dictating now you're, you are choosing, what am I trying to say? You're adapting to them. And so you are moldable and adaptable. Like, but not in a good way. Does that make sense? Yes, but so not in a good way, yes. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That was a part of it. Okay. You are enabling them. You're sending them a message. Oh, that is the word. You're sending them a message that it's okay for you to disrespect me. It's okay. I'll just roll with it. It's okay, but even though we have, we have, you had said you were gonna meet me at eight, multiple times, and you consistently show up half an hour after and leave me standing here waiting for 30 minutes and we miss part of the movie. If I just say, well, you know, I'll just show up at 8.30 when you're showing up. 
I'm telling them, it's okay. It's okay to show up late. You don't have to respect me. It's okay that you're not trustworthy. I will, I'll, I'll let you call the shots. I'll just adapt to you. Because if you think that's the last thing that they're going to disrespect you with, you're wrong. They're feeling you out. Um, I've seen this so many times, and I know I'm kind of going off on an old tangent here, but it's kind of hard for me not to. People that are disrespecters of people have radar for the people that will allow it. If I hadn't seen this myself numerous times, I wouldn't believe it. But it's true. They will go into a group of people, and they seem to have radar to pick out the one in the room who's going to let them disrespect. Okay? So you've got to decide how you're going to behave. But here's the thing. Even if they start it, because it's a pattern you see, it starts with that first time. And you're like, okay, well, but once it's a pattern, if you allow it, you're making that choice. You're choosing to participate in the dysfunctional boundaries. You're choosing to allow yourself to be disrespected. I'm not saying this is easy. I'm just point it out. Okay? All right. Um, real quickly, I want to throw out here because some people will say, well, you know, Dana, um, you know, setting boundaries just kind of feels, it feels mean. It just feels rude. Um, I'm supposed to be a loving, giving, kind person like Christ taught us to be. Yes, we are. Um, how can I do that, setting boundaries? I'm supposed to be always giving, always loving, always helping to shoulder. This can be a particular hard one for Christians because we, we, we have that feeling. We've been you know, told, you know, and we'll talk about later the difference between a burden and a load and according to what the scripture says, what we are supposed to do in helping others and what we're not. Um, but if you have no boundaries and you allow, who you're just like a turtle on your back, and you allow anyone and everyone who happens to come into your life to take whatever they want, whenever they want it, however they want to take it. How long are you going to last before you are a dried up, desiccated husk thrown on the side of the road? Helping no one. Do you see what I'm saying? Setting boundaries helps you to keep your bodily juices where they belong so that you can keep helping, you can keep loving, you can keep reaching out. Do you see what I'm saying? How many has ever flown on a plane and heard the, the airline stewardess, flight attendant, whatever they call themselves these days? Um, they're going, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, and you know, you're, you're like zoned out, where are you know? And she starts talking about the oxygen masks. And if you happen to be flying with a child, now, most people, you know, here's my, here's my little child. My little child. I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for this little child. Oxygen mask come down. What does the flight attendant say you are to do? Huh? Yes. Secure your own first. Well, what? Secure my own first? When I have this little vulnerable child with me, why in the world would I put that oxygen mask on myself first? It's no good, you can't breathe. <laughs> exactly. You are no good to who you need to help if you pass out. That's an example of why we need to set boundaries and why setting boundaries helps you to help others. Because if you don't have your oxygen, you're going to pass out. And you are not going to be any good to any of these people that you want to love on, that you want to reach out to. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So now we're going to watch 
a video that I just have to say, this video frustrates me half to death. Every time I watch it, I get aggravated. And you're gonna see why. This is called Sherry Without Boundaries. It's in, it's part of the Henry Cloud and John Townsend thing. You can watch it on YouTube. It's an example of a woman who goes through several different parts of her life without setting boundaries and what that looks like. It lasts a little over six minutes, and we're good. Okay, so let's see if I can figure this out. Someone who doesn't own it 
isn't responsible. Well, in the spiritual world, boundaries are just as real, but often harder to see. The goal of this session is to help you define your intangible boundaries and to recognize them as valuable tools for living a healthy life. Boundaries keep us from taking on things we shouldn't, helping us not get overcommitted, and eliminating the stress that goes with that kind of busyness. Boundaries free us to love other people so that when we're loving them, we're not resenting them at the same time. Healthy boundaries mean a life in balance and the ability to care for yourself and when and where appropriate to care for others. Boundaries define your soul and they help you to guard it and maintain it. You know, just as homeowners set physical property lines around their land, we need to set physical, emotional, and spiritual boundaries for our lives to help us distinguish what's our responsibility and what isn't. As we see in Sherry's struggles, the inability to set appropriate boundaries at appropriate times can be very destructive. Sherry has great difficulty knowing what things are her responsibilities and what aren't. And in her desire to do the right thing or to avoid conflict, she ends up taking on or owning problems that God never intended her to take on. Let's look at some of them. Her mother's chronic loneliness, her boss's irresponsibility, her friend's unending crises, and the list goes on. Sherry also fails to take responsibility for herself, her poor choices, her non-existent limits, her unhappiness, and this list goes on too. What causes such weak boundaries or boundaries that don't exist at all? Well, a variety of things. Past hurts, poor models, and sometimes misunderstood Christian teachings. Whatever their root, it's easy to see that Sherry needs clearly defined boundaries. And so do you and I. Boundaries define us. They define what is me and what is not me. A boundary shows where I end and someone else begins, leading me to a sense of ownership. And healthy boundaries are what we'll be working towards in this session and the eight to come. Dana, do we have extra pens for our cards? Um. those stories of Share Without Boundaries bugged you the most? Her friend calling her at work. <laughs> when, when I grew up, nobody called me for my personal private life and dumped on me like that. I just can't even imagine that. And her friend just went on and on and on. That's crazy. Uh -huh. Yeah? I think the one where she's sewing and she said, oh, I don't care, I'm going to be late for work. Again. Yeah. Again. I can't believe it. It was just a horrible one. Actually, uh, Chick-fil-A is the same way. They don't care if you're running late. They don't care? You'd be three to five minutes late and they're like, okay. I think that's great. I mean, that, I mean, that's, that's great grace, grace personally. Grace. There is, it is a lot of grace, uh, mm -hmm. but I was like, what if all of us show up five minutes later? I bet there are fair then, <laughs> yeah. but there's only like one or two that have used it. Well, um, and I will say, and we'll have more time to talk as we go, as a, as a Christian, um, there are times where the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to give more than we can in our humanness. Um, and there are those instances where, you know, we can, we can 
support someone, give someone something because of the Holy Spirit within us. We couldn't do it all of our own. But it's important not to set up a pattern like Sherry without boundaries. You know, I mean, her boss was taking advantage of her. Her friend was taking advantage of her. Her mom was taking advantage of her. Her church, the woman, the her, oh, you want to teach VBS? Clearly, she didn't want to teach VBS, but she was like, ah, oh, you know, ah, oh, oh. So it's like, I have to please everybody. I have to do whatever they want. She's like the turtle on her back with all these people, whoever happens to come up, whether it's her mom, her friend that's calling her to work, the woman from church, I mean, whoever wants a piece of her is, 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 is it's a free-for-all grab. Are you saying it's okay to break boundaries and then just form a pattern? Can you break your own boundary? Like, like if you got like this boundary that you don't talk on the phone past a certain time, but you had two friends this week and they just talked to you. As long as you're not doing that like all the time, breaking your own boundary, it's okay. Well, first of all, be your boundary. You get to decide where you where you put it, and what it. Basically, we teach people how to treat us. If I could change my boundaries daily if I wanted, you know, yes. If, if I was really confused on this. Like, yes, you could. Yeah. But then, if you're doing that, it's confusing to the other people because right. they don't really know where your fence line is. <laughs> and so, because we train people how to treat us, if someone is treating us poorly, then we need to go look in the mirror. Instead of shame, 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 and not that they don't have their own responsibility, they do. But that's in their yard, and we'll talk about that next time. I think next time we'll talk about yards. But in your yard are your thoughts, your feelings, and what you choose to do. So if you're allowing it, then you're you're training them to keep doing it to you. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Any other, we got just a few more minutes, any other questions, comments about anything we've talked about or video or anything at all? Well, years ago I heard um, Dr. James Dobson, who probably most of you don't know, but <laughs> he was very, very good. And he once said, anytime you say yes to something, you're automatically saying no to something else. And I just remembered that. It, it made so much sense. Because we all want to say yes. We all want to give of ourselves, but if we do, then something else might come up that was more important, or that the Lord had for us, and now we have to say no to that. So, that was good. That's right. I think I was talking to somebody earlier in the week, and she was saying, you know, boundaries helped her say no to some things so that she could say yes to what God wanted her to do. Yep. Because the previously she had just been saying yes to everything, and then when she felt like the Lord was leading her to do something, she didn't either have enough time or enough energy to do it because she was too busy doing all these other things. So it's, it's we only have so much time. We only have so much energy. So each of us gets to decide how we're going to spend that. Okay? So this was, tonight was just kind of like an intro. I didn't get to do a whole lot of teaching, but we did some. Um, all of the administrative stuff, we won't have to explain all that every single time. So that's that's done. Uh, so next time you come, I'll have we'll have the uh, attendance sheet. I'll just put it on this back table. So you just come in and just find your name, just check off your name. If you bring anybody with you that's new, we'll have some of the cards on the table. If, when somebody comes for the very first time, they need to fill out a card, so they'll be back there as well. And also, we'll have a, a notebook or some such thing for you to write down prayer requests so we can put them on the, the group email and that'll all be back there so and I will try to start at 645 because do you notice what time it is yeah see so our plan here is for me to stop at a 45 minutes so that we have about 20 minutes left to do that awesome small group work so do you see why I have to start at 645 um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do that right at 6:45. It's a boundary. Um, <laughs> start at 6:45. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, we're done. Okay. And then um, books. If people need books, I think does Lisa have? She said she found some. She got some, but okay. she didn't say where they were. Okay, but you said the workbook. Is the best. What if people want a book? 
Give us one more time. What yeah, was I mean, you'll, this is the workbook, and it has like a bigger fat book that goes with it. I mean, at least the Blankenship says she has, I don't know if she has the workbooks or the real books. She might have real books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think so, yeah. yeah. Actually, I have, I have one of two if you want mine. Uh, I do have two copies. Let's see. Actually, I think I have three. Come on here. I'll bring, I'll bring it for you. So I'll bring it for you Sunday. Oh, I'll be here since Sunday. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for having me. Thanks for your input. Oh, thank you. And I don't, I don't know, I don't know if it, why it could be the battery, which it shouldn't have been, but it stopped. So I'll figure that one out next time. But we'll be ready to go.